Welcome to Paint a Beautiful Picture. This is episode number 143, Intending to Overcome. My challenge question for you today is this, am I an overcomer? In other words, in your life, what kind of obstacles, what kind of difficulties, what kind of challenges have you overcome? And were you successful at that? Or did you fail miserably and you look back and you have all this regret and sometimes even all this anger and frustration and sadness about the things you were unable to overcome. In today's episode, we're going to talk about teaching your child how to be an overcomer and to do it with strong intention. And as we all know, one of the main ways that our children learn is by watching us, paying attention to our lives and gaining the skills that they need because of the things that we model in our own lives. And that's why the question is so important. Am I an overcomer? As a young woman, I was 18 years old, typical high school graduate. I went away to college. All of my life, I had pretty much tackled everything that got in front of me and won. I was not great at math, however. And I took my first college math class, I want to tell you, kicked my behind, as in I was pretty sure I was going to fail it. I had done badly in geometry in 11th grade, but pretty much that was because our geometry teacher wasn't a great teacher. And I got a tutor and I made it through geometry just fine. But oh my word, this college level math, wow, we, it was freaking me out because it involved things like trigonometry and calculus, which I had never studied before. Just a lot of general math principles that didn't necessarily stick in my brain because math was not my strongest subject, and it was a nightmare. I did not overcome it. I dropped out. I, I dropped out of that class. I felt so horrible, really and truly, from a straight-A student to dropping out of a class because I wasn't about to fail it. That was pretty tragic for me. And kind of a big eye-opener for me because it was probably the first major thing in my world that I failed at and failed pretty flamboyantly, I might add. I did not overcome math at that point in my life. And in fact, it even contributed more to my fear of math or my um, aversion to math. I just didn't even want to handle math at all. So the thing is, every single one of us come up against things that aren't our best strength or that don't necessarily fit our skill strength. And, and what are we going to do? Because ideally, if we intend to overcome, much of the time we can. I share that story with you about the place that I failed because sometimes, no matter how strongly we intend to overcome, no matter how hard we work at something, we're not going to get over everything. We are not going to excel at everything. We are not going to accomplish everything we set out to. It's just the truth. You might as well be that honest with yourself that occasionally it may not go just the way you wanted or the way that you had planned or hoped for. But when you intend to overcome, oftentimes you can. Just like the person who intends to fail usually does. We have so much self-fulfilling prophecy in our worlds and we deny that to ourselves. Oh, that happened because of this or because of that. We have all these excuses, all these rationalizations, but often the reason that we fail is because we meant to fail, or at least we certainly did not mean to succeed. It's a big deal. Your mindset, your determination, and your actions all need to go together. You need to teach that to your child. They need to know that. Oh, I'm so bad at this. I'll never be any good at this. I know I'm not going to be able to do this. Well, you're absolutely right. Huh. Yeah, because that's your mindset. You just said it. You established it. You're determined that's how it's going to go. Oh, my goodness. That's true. That is what's going to happen. You need to help your child understand that. You need to say, I can do this. I'm going to do my very best at this. I'm going to work at this so hard. I know I can do this. That's an entirely different mindset. That's a mindset of success. 
That's a mindset of determination. And that's a choice everyone gets to make. You can't sit with your kid through second grade, third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade and give him or her a mindset. You cannot. I promise you, you cannot. But especially as a little kid from the time they're a baby until they're five or six or seven, you can continually teach them the mindset of determination and success. If you're just tackling this now, when your child is 8, 10, or 12, you have a little more work set out for you because they've already established a mindset or a sense of determination. And now instead of you setting a straight path in front of them, you've got to set a deviation. But it doesn't mean you can't. And the reason I know that is I lived with two extraordinarily negative and frankly abusive parents and I learned. But I didn't learn until I was an adult. It was quite challenging for me to learn. So the earlier you start with your child, the better it is. The next thing is, are you going to do the work? Some people have the mindset, oh, I know I'm going to be great at this. I know I'm going to succeed. I know I'm going to be amazing. And then they sit on their behind and wait for it to happen. Uh, wrong answer. If you want it to happen, you get it, got to get off your butt and put in the time and the work. That's the reality of life. And you need to teach that exact same thing to your child. They go, oh yeah, man, I'm going to be like a great baseball player. But they're always sitting in front of the television set, playing video games or vegging out. And they never go out and they never throw the ball. They're not willing to learn how to catch. They're not willing to learn how to bat. They, they don't get any good at fielding and grabbing onto the ball. Yeah, they're, they're not going to be a great ball player. They're going to be a great couch potato. All of us have to understand that if we're going to be good at something, if we're going to develop skills, we have to do the work. Ah, and we have to devote the time. Very few people have great success the very first time. You have to do it and do it and do it again and do it some more. That's what practice is all about. This is why ball players go to the field and practice seven, eight hours a day sometimes. This is why basketball players run laps because they got to build up strength and endurance. And oh my word, they have to be able to breathe by the time the third quarter comes around. They got to run those laps and run that court and shoot those sh shots and stand on the free throw line. And Yeah, it takes time and effort and devotion. Don't think just because you believe you're going to succeed that it's going to happen if you won't get up and do the work. Same thing is true of being a great artist or a great musician or, or a great anything. You have to do the work. So that sense of feeling like you can succeed has to be followed by the determination to do the work necessary to make it happen. Okay. So the mindset is great, but it takes some determination and it takes some feet. You got to put some feet, some action on what you determined. If a kid is a real laid back human being. I had, I have one of those. I raised one of those children. They may not have a great amount of internal motivation. There is external motivation and internal motivation. And we know the difference. All of us do. We know people that get a bajillion things done all the time and we stand in wonder. They're very internally motivated. They don't have to have someone tell them or someone push them or someone drag them. They don't need it. They're internally motivated. If you have an internally motivated child, teach them how to use that strong internal motivation to get done, to accomplish what matters to them. Otherwise, they'll just be driven nuts with all this energy and get into trouble and break stuff because they don't have somewhere to direct that energy. So you need to find out what matters to them and help them to direct all that internal motivation in a positive direction. The child who is not very internally motivated. There are a number of things you can do, and I'm going to talk about them because for me personally, being a very, very internally motivated human being, uh, I had a challenge with my son who wasn't. So I'll share some of this with you. One, you need to admit that who they are is not bad. I was terrible. I told you I was not a great parent when I was young. I walked out of that house where there were abusive, insulting, cruel, critical, nasty human beings. So what do you know? I was kind of good at that myself. And I could be really insulting and terrible. So I kept telling my son, something must be wrong with you. I think there's something wrong with you. Oh, that was such a terrible bad message. I learned better, but wow, I had to overcome that message after I had given it to him. There was nothing wrong with him. 
He was just different. That's a really good message for all of us to understand. Just because someone is different than us, they're not wrong. They are different. So a person who is not internally motivated needs to know that's who you are. Really and truly, it's okay. Then I'm going to externally motivate you and you need to learn how to externally motivate yourself because they're going to have to do that at some point in their lives. And you say to them, okay, so you do this, whatever this is, you get straight A's, or if they're not a straight A student and they really don't have that intellectual capacity, you get straight B's and C's. You're carrying a 2.5 or a 2.75. And at the end of every quarter, this is what you get for that. Lots of kids who are not internally motivated will be motivated by that. As long as you really find out what matters to that kid, you can externally motivate them. I don't care if that's a, d a day at the video arcade or a day going to a big, huge Major League Baseball game or a football game or I hate to give food as a motivator. I want you to know that because it tends to give us fat kids because then they develop this relationship with food that's all about this is my reward, this is my motivation. I want you to know that one. However, once a quarter isn't going to kill your kid, so you say, okay, we're going to go out for your absolute favorite pizza and you can have the whole pizza yourself. If you, if you can get it down, I don't care. I mean, four times a year, it's okay. You don't want to encourage gluttony, but you do want to have some kind of external motivation. That's a very strong external motivator. My kids went roller skating all the time. That wasn't one I could use, but occasionally we would go play bumper cars, which was a total blast. So that one would work. They had a go-kart place where we lived. You just need to find that external motivator. When it comes to things like doing chores, contributing in the household, uh, believe it or not, for some kids, that's a very big deal. Overcoming laziness. Oh, mom, I don't want to do it. Overcoming a crummy attitude. Overcoming being really selfish. Like, I don't care if the house falls down around my ears. I'm really busy. Okay, listen, you have to overcome this attitude because for the rest of your life, you have to contribute. You have things that you have to help. You have people that you need to help. It all has to get done for life to go smoothly. Even within our household, you need to contribute. So you have motivation. I used to have a chart. And I, at first, I would do the check off. But that was pitiful because it didn't really mean to them much to them. They got to the point where they would complete a task and they could check it off. And that was a big external motivator. My son loved seeing those check marks. As a teacher, I can tell you, I've seen students, they love those gold stars. Oh my word, you put that chart up there and they get to stick that gold star on there. They're ecstatic out of their, out of their minds. It's a reasonably simple external motivator, but an effective one. Here's the rest of what you have to know. With some kids, the negative is a motivator. That means they have that very same chart and they don't do it. And you take a black marker and you fill in the box with a black just a black box, which shows that they didn't get a gold star or they didn't get a hooray check mark. And they're like, oh, and they hate that so much that they're then going to be motivated to work, not to get any more of those black boxes. They really don't want to see that. That wasn't so effective with my son, but it's definitely been effective with some of my students. The other thing that is a possibility, although it's often the last place I go, is the external motivator of discipline. Okay, you didn't do it. You can't go to your friend's birthday party. You can't go roller skating with us on Friday night. You won't get to go out when we go out for ice cream. I used to take my kids about every two weeks for a really small ice cream cone. But if they really did not follow through and do what they were supposed to, then they weren't allowed. You have to find whatever motivates that particular child. And so they can understand in time what they need to do for themselves. They need to set themselves a goal and then they need to give themselves a reward or an external motivator that will get them there. That's really an effective way of helping a kid or a young person understand that if I'm just a human being without a lot of internal motivation, that's how I'm made. There's nothing wrong with that. But if I'm really going to be an overcomer, 
I'm going to have to establish some external motivation for myself that works. You might notice I gave you quite a number of suggestions. Yeah, that's because it's a big deal. Every kid is not just the same. You have to find what is motivational for that particular youngster. Really and truly, it might be you can go swimming at the Y. Uh, because I don't like to swim. That one never clicked for me, but it was a big thing for my kids. They both swim like fish. And so uh, sometimes they would get to go to the Y and swim in the pool. Or also we lived in a, an area that had a huge outdoor pool with both a low board, it was six feet up, and a 10-foot diving board. My one son is pretty good. And uh, I would take them there, cost some cash, but man, they love going there. That was a really good motivator for my one son especially. So you have to find out what works. The reason motivation matters is you will seldom overcome anything, much less something difficult without a motivation. The motivation might just be the sense of the significance that I met the goal or the self-confidence and the great feeling that I did this, which for me, that's a huge motivator. For some people, it actually might be the reward. Now, the reward might be, be doing the thing itself and mastering it, or the re reward might be something else because I had to do this for work. I had to do this for my spouse or my mate. I had to do this for my kids, but I didn't love it. So this, this reward right here, this is going to make it worthwhile. All of us need to learn this, but we need to have this intention that we are going to overcome the obstacles, the difficulties, the challenge that get in front of us. We need to help our kids learn how to be an overcomer. As a Christian, I want to tell you there is really an awesome thing that happens in the book of Revelation. Jesus makes promises to those who are overcomers, and they're all amazing promises. When you look in the notes below, it will give you an opportunity to go and look at what some of those awesome motivators are as we overcome in this world that God intends to give to us. So there is a precedent about being an overcomer and earning a reward for doing that. I hope today whatever challenges, whatever struggles, whatever obstacles you face, that you are an overcomer and that you are able to help your child along in the, in the way of life to be an overcomer as well. Thank you for joining me today. You may find additional information on our paintabeautifulpicture.com website. Additionally, you may watch me on Rumble, and you may also listen to a podcast on Buzzsprout or Spreaker, all under the name Paint a Beautiful Picture. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. You may subscribe, and if you are interested in receiving notifications, please hit the notifications button.